Hey guys, Philip Shadler here, your local real estate agent in Los Angeles. And let's look at the market. People are talking about a crash. People are afraid of recession. What is really going on? There are some interesting facts I found, uh, different research I did. So stay tuned for the latest real estate news. Is the market slowing down? Yes. Is it crashing? No. I don't see a crash and but let's look at some interesting data that I collected here for you. Now if you look at pending home sales in April in the United States, you can see here in the West the home sales have dropped 4.3%. In the Midwest, however, they increased 6.6%. And remember, real estate is regional, so it's very different in different regions, you know, it reacts differently. In the South, for example, it's the decline of home sales of 4.7% and in the Northeast, a decline of 16.2%. So this is definitely a slowdown, and this is partially or mostly due to the raising of the interest rates by the Feds, because now, currently, you have an interest rate, a mortgage interest rate of 6.25%, which, of course, compared to two years ago, is double. And I think just a month ago, it was probably around 5.25 or 5%, so it's going up very quickly and the rates are increasing in my opinion a little bit too fast but you know i'm not uh, i'm not the expert there with the with the interest rates the feds are the ones who are the experts and i would assume that they're looking at this they're obviously monitoring the real estate market and they're noticing that even though with the interest rates rising or raising them uh sales the prices are still holding strong in some areas for example here Housing defies the Fed's campaign to control inflation. Home prices just keep rising despite surging mortgage rates and they are baking to indexes that track rising prices. This is interesting, this is by Bloomberg here, and this is just uh, came out May 14th. And so this is interesting because even though they're raising the rates, it is, um, it is a little bit difficult to control the inflation with that. That's obviously what they're trying to fight here. Keep an eye on overwhelmed housing markets as the housing boom implodes. So again, in certain areas, in certain regions, um, we had a housing market that was 20% or more uh, added. So in other words, 20% or more value was added to a house every year. However, the salaries only keep up with four or five or four or five percent. So if this trend would continue, it would surely be a collapse. And this is just what the feds are trying to avoid right now. You cannot have the, the housing prices go up so high that nobody can ever afford a house again. And we're already at this level where it's difficult to afford a house. But what this has done here is, um, if you look over here, for example, this is Alto's research. They monitor every house that's being sold on the market every week, every day. And in 2019, we almost had a million properties in the inventory, which is still considered kind of low. In order to have a healthy market, we would have at least have to have 1.5 or 2 million properties in the inventory. That would balance things a little bit out more. But then the uh, frenzy began, as you can see here, in July 2020, we had 698,256 homes, and then that dropped in July 2021 to 342,086 units. So this is very low inventory. And if you look at June 10th, just now, a few days ago, the inventory is only at 396 1,463. So we have still very low inventory and this is the reason why prices in some regions are still holding strong. Now there are some price reductions. There's definitely price reductions going on there. But what, that, what all this has cost is cost, for example, Compass, as you can see here, to lay off about, I think I've heard 400 to 450 agents, so 10% of their workforce. Your uh, Compass uh, spokesperson says, due to the clear signals of slowing economic growth, we have taken a number of measures to safeguard our business and reduce costs, including pausing expansion efforts and the difficult decision to reduce the size of our employee team by approximately 10%. And again, this is not just Compass, there is also Redfin has this, you know, uh, CNNBC just reported that Compass Redfin announced the layoffs amid slowing home sales. So again, slowing home sales is not necessarily a crash. That's a well, correction of the market. So some people may see it as a crash. Oh my gosh, the crash is coming. I don't see a crash coming, at least not now. Um, here, you know, this is <clears throat> the idea, real estate refresh. 
higher mortgage rates have yet to curb growth in asking prices. So you, as you can see here, this is from the exchange, the CNBC, that this is, um, even though they have raised the rates, it has not really curbed the asking prices. In some areas it has, but not yet. It will, usually in the Midwest, it starts first and then it goes, comes into the bigger cities like New York, LA, San Francisco, and so forth. But as we have seen here in this previous slide, in the Midwest, ironically right here, it actually has increased, which is really unusual. But again, this whole market has been very unusual. Um, Redfin is also laying off people here and some softening in buyer demand. So there is some good news uh, for buyers. There's good news and bad news. The good news is that, again, the buyer demand is softening. There's not as much bidding wars. There is not as much frenzy anymore. So the prices are not shooting up 100, 200, 300,000 over asking price as we have seen even, even two, three months ago, I've seen that, or even a month ago still. Again, it does still happen, but it's more rare. Then um, the idea is that the good news is for buyers is that they have more of a choice now, less of a frenzy. But the bad news is that a lot of buyers have been eliminated, especially first time home buyers and the mid range buyers. You know, anything here in California, I would say between uh, six and nine hundred thousand is more like a mid range. Uh, they have been affected because their uh, interest rate rise to six point two five percent has seriously put like compared to a month or two ago put eight, nine hundred dollars more on their monthly mortgage payment as it would have been back then. So that discourages a lot of buyers. And also, um, in a way, you can't blame them, even though I think they're not correct by thinking so. They're thinking that they're buying at a high level market and that's going to crash. I don't see that happening at all. Again, I'm looking at all these, even Freddie, May, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae have talked about that, that this is more of a correction rather than a crash. Now, uh, Redfin also has big issues here um, because we could be, I mean, again, I'm not a big fan of Redfin because they're undercutting the real estate agents, but they do have some data that is worth mentioning. We could be, uh, the Glenn Kelman, a Redfin of CEO, says we could be facing years, not months, of fewer home sales and Redfin still plans to thrive. If falling from 97 per share to $8 doesn't put a company through heck, I don't know what does. That is a huge drop, you know, and this is interesting to me because somebody, obviously the investors must have lost confidence in Redfin because dropping a stock market price from 97 to 8 is a huge, huge drop. Now, having said that, um, here, for example, uh, a housing crash, this is by um, Insider, uh, businessinsider.com. A housing crash is unlikely, but a correction could be around the corner and here they're talking about the difference. And of course, you know, a lot of people think it is a housing bubble. The talk, the talk of likely housing bubbles has intensified amid surging housing costs. But again, I don't see it as a housing bubble because a housing bubble would imply that it's going to blow up and crash and everything falls down. I just don't see that at the moment. As a matter of fact, I would imagine that when people leave the stock market, usually they go into bonds, gold, silver, and real estate. And real estate probably being the last of the four, because it's the longest time to liquefy your assets. If you have the gold and silver, you can liquefy it much faster if you have to. Um, here's another thing. Keep an eye on these overvalued housing markets as the housing boom implodes. So the housing boom, yes, I guess it implodes, but again, it's not a crash. It's just, I guess if the, the word is a little bit harsh, implode, because it sounds like it's crashing, but it is definitely changing. We're definitely in a shift. There's no doubt about that. And I can show you here really quick on the, um, this is also from uh, Bloomberg, I believe. I'm oh, sorry, the Washington Post. Mortgage rates are rising, but the hot housing, housing market is slow to cool. So it's still taking a long time for the, inc the increase of rates by the feds. It's taking a longer time to, to show results as they probably have expected. And if that is what they're thinking, the feds, then it's very likely that they may have another interest rate hike in July. If it's going to be half a percent again, that would be a lot in my opinion. A quarter percent would probably be better. But I think at the moment uh, it's high enough in my opinion, especially buyers are being spooked out of the market here. And also uh, something I wanted to mention really quickly is the current, because of the high rates right now and the high prices, current homeowners are locked into their properties, meaning um, Typically in a traditional market, if you had purchased a house and 10, 15 years later, you had accumulated enough equity, that would that that gain in equity would enable you, if you sell your house, to purchase a larger house. 
Well, that's not the case right now. So if, if, if a homeowner would sell their house right now, they would be basically buying the same type of house just for a higher price. In other words, they would get a larger house. They, it doesn't make sense for them to sell. That's what I'm trying to say. So they're kind of, a lot of people think that current homeowners are locked in their home. And you know, it's not the, it's not the worst thing because it's just stay in it and you ride it out. But um, it is difficult for new buyers to get in the market. That's, that's the more challenging thing right now. Another thing I can show you really quickly here in the uh, MLS here, this is for example in the Los Angeles area, Encino, Tarzana, uh, Woodland Hills. And what I see here is <clears throat> about two, three weeks ago, I saw more arrow green up. So meaning they listed the house, but then they increased the price. Now it's the opposite. Now I see a lot of people dropping the price. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight properties. <clears throat> and these are all in this month. So June and actually May and June. So this is very recent. Um, most of them are actually in June here right now. And so that means that they're definitely either priced, house their, priced their house too high or they just don't have enough uh, offers coming in. But also what's happening is that the days on market, the DOM is just longer than it was before. Anyway, this is my report for you. I hope this has been helpful to you. And if I can answer any questions for real estate, don't hesitate to call me. My name is Philip Shadler and my number is 310-918-2260. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.